vergeet wat je hebt geleerd op school. De aarde is niet rond, hij is plat. Oké, okay, freaky. Er is zelfs een flat earth society voor mensen die denken dat de aarde niet rond is. Deze tweet zegt het misschien wel allemaal. Once you go flat, you never go back. Maar de wereld is niet een groot plat vlak, maar een ronde bol. Maar de wereld is niet een groot plat vlak, maar een ronde bol.
school is niks voor ze. Daar worden ze niet gezond van. Maar de wereld is niet een groot plat vlak, maar een ronde bol. Het is bijna niet voor te stellen hier op het Groningen platteland, waar de weilanden oneindig door lijken te gaan. Maar de wereld is niet een groot plat vlak, maar een ronde bol. Hoe we dit weten? Nou bijvoorbeeld door een schip uit te zwaaien. Je ziet het langzaam wegzakken. Maak je geen zorgen hoor, dit schip is niet gezonken of van de aarde afgevallen, maar we kunnen het niet meer zien vanwege de kromming van de aarde.
the surface of standing water is flat or convex. These two points are six statute miles apart. They went into the water, and with the eye about eight inches above the surface, observed the receding boat during the whole period required. The flag and the boat were distinctly visible throughout the whole distance. The surface of the water for a length of six miles did not decline or curvate downwards from the line of sight. In a second experiment, Dr. Robotham placed seven flags along the edge of the water, each one mile distant from the next, with their tops positioned five feet above the surface. He then mounted a telescope at a height of five feet behind the first flag and took his observations. Not a single inch of curvature was detected, and the flags all lined up perfectly as consistent with a flat plane. Door de kromming is er een horizon. Tot hier kun je kijken en niet verder. En als je dus ook eh, wil zien dat de aarde rond is, dan moet je als mens heel hoog om dat te kunnen zien. Let's get higher. Oké. Okay in the middle of the screen and find out that it's flat. A skyscraper and get on the roof and find out that it's flat. It's in the middle of the screen. The horizon is flat. But obviously, I'm not high enough. Let's get higher. It's going straight across my screen. And it rose to my eye level. And I find out that it's flat. Let's go into space. It's in the middle of the screen, and it rose to my eye level, and find out that it's flat. The Earth is dus geen oneindig groot vlak karton. What if past the Arctic Circle, what I have coined the glacial frontier, beyond
beyond the glacial frontier is more pockets. So what we have here is a flat plain that doesn't end at the Arctic Circle, it only begins. So what we're looking at here is many more geothermal pockets. It's by far the most uh, valuable, important place left in the world for science. It happens to be an untouched reservoir of natural resources. We've found enough of coal within 180 miles of the South Pole in a great uh, region of mountains. It's not covered with snow, enough to supply the whole world for quite a while. Uh, that's, that's the coal. Now, there's evidence of uh, other, many other minerals. Uh, we are pretty sure there's oil. Now, that coal shows the bottom of the world. Now, by far, the coldest spot in the world. Where that coal is gets 100 below zero. trying to free your mind.
Antarctica is said to be a continent of ice situated at the bottom of the ball, it should therefore not have a perimeter greater than 12,000 miles. However, early explorers like Captain Cook and James Clark Ross, in attempting to circumnavigate Antarctica, took three to four years to do so, and clocked in the distance traveled at 50 to 60,000 miles. That's twice the circumference of the equator. But the real proof for the flat earth map is in the flight paths. On the ball earth, several flights would have their shortest, quickest, and straightest path over or around the Antarctic continent. But instead, these flights take all manner of tangential detours, crossing into the northern hemisphere to refuel. One flight that crossed the Indian Ocean is from Johannesburg, South Africa to Perth, Australia. However, this flight takes a detour north, stopping in either Dubai, Hong Kong or Malaysia to refuel. For a total flight time averaging over 18 hours, this ridiculously wayward detour is frustrating to say the least. On the flat earth map starts to make sense. Another quick and easy flight, you would think, is from Johannesburg to Santiago, Chile. While an easy 12-hour flight below the Tropic of Capricorn is to be expected, instead every flight crosses the equator to refuel in Senegal for a total flight time of 19 hours. Though it doesn't make sense on the globe, as you can see it fits perfectly on the flat earth map. A third flight from Johannesburg is to Sao Paulo, Brazil, which should be a direct 10-hour flight but instead, every flight crosses into the north to stop in London to refuel, making the total flight time 24 hours. From Santiago, Chile to Sydney, Australia, a straight 15-hour flight across the South Pacific is expected. The flight stops all the way at Los Angeles to refuel before continuing south to its destination. As already stated, these detours make no sense on the globe, but are explained and work perfectly well on the flat earth map. En een van de bijzondere dingen die een bal kan, is spinnen. Zou de aarde nou ook ronddraaien? En wat merken wij hier eigenlijk van? Consider this. Those who maintain that the Earth is a globe that spins suggest that people standing at the equator are being whirled around at approximately 1,000 miles an hour. And yet, you and I both know that on many days it's possible to stand outside without a single hair being messed up by the breeze. There's all kinds of evidence for the phenomenon of what's called continental drift. This means that the, the continents are able to move as if they're floating on a fluid. Now, if the Earth is, is spherical, if it's spinning, can any, anybody knows that if this is spinning very, very, very fast like that, that the continents should all be located at the equator because centrifugal force would move the continents from the poles to the middle.
In June, the sun is circling over the Tropic of Cancer, so it's got a much tighter circle. In December, the sun is circling over the Tropic of Capricorn, so it's got a much bigger circle. And at the equinoxes, the sun is circling over the equator, okay, equinox, equator. Every day I wake up and I wonder how is it that I've lost that warmth when I was younger and I was at the lake every morning I woke up it was an adventure it was discovery it was a new set of mistakes and even victories and now the world has been so filtered and cold and angry and greed and you know we've all just struck gold if you're researching the flat earth if you've just found out about this flat earth I suggest that you go out Take a walk, take a drive, take a train, take a bus, take a plane, and just stop and look. The sea is flat, and it's amazing.
imagine you're feeling a bit like Alan. I can see it in your eyes. You have the look of a man who accepts what he sees because he is expecting to wake up. Ironically, this is not far from the truth. Let me tell you why you're here. You're here because you know something. What you know you can't explain. But you feel it. You felt it your entire life. That there's something wrong with the world. You don't know what it is, but it's there. Like a splinter in your mind. Driving you mad. It is this feeling that has brought you to me. It is the world that has been pulled over your eyes to blind you from the truth. Then as you pan to the left, it's actually still daylight over here, and the sunset. Look at that beauty. And it won't ever completely settle over there, it will stay light, actually the whole night. But over here, If the moon is reflecting the light of the sun, then the source of the light that would cast that type of shadow should be directly across from it, somewhere up here, in this direction. But it's not. The sun's way down here. So how is the sun way down here getting that angle of a shadow on the moon? Why isn't it doing the same thing to the moon that it's doing to me? You would think that if the moon is reflecting the light of the sun, that the sun should be shining this way. But it's not. It's way down there. The angle is totally wrong for that shadow. You will notice in the pictures, stars show through the dark part portions of the moon. And as I go through them, I'll blow them up a little larger so you can see these stars. I'll point to one, there's a blue star here, a white star, there's another star right here, it 
Deus. That's that picture. Move on to the next one. You can actually see the stars here. Now we'll zoom in and we'll see a red star with a white star right in here. And then there's three stars, a white star, a blue star, and another blue star. And there's a white star. This one here, you can see the stars. One, two. That's pretty bright. Now zoom in on it. Now there's a red star, white star, showing through the uh, moon, white star, and then a blue star again, with another star over here. Rahu, which is uh, another celestial body, the same size as the sun and the moon. It's also been called the black sun. And this is the ancient explanation for eclipses, the black sun or Rahu, which occults the sun and the moon at certain points. There's an 18 year cycle that eclipses go through and every 18 years it repeats. So you can predict eclipses based on this geocentric flat model with Rahu as they've been doing for thousands of years. And this claims of seeing Nibiru or, or some other celestial body very well may be this, this translucent dark body, the black sun, since we're not told about it. Uh, we see strange phenomenon um, and think it could be a, a second sun, very well may be on the black sun.
it's so amazing that you could just see all of this here on your computer. Um, just wow, yeah. So another really cool thing is that they're mentioning Zion City a lot, and apparently these schools were around still in the early 1900s where they were teaching Flat Earth. So it's really fucking strange and bizarre that, you know, the media right now is like attacking Flat Earth and just saying it's so fucking crazy, outlandish, you should probably, you know, go back to first grade or you should probably read a science textbook or you should listen to like Neil deGrasse Tyson. Meanwhile, there were schools teaching Flat Earth a hundred years ago. So you don't have to be going around the globe. You could just be sailing around the land. And that's exactly what he did. Unfortunately, you know, this was a major turning point in people's consciousness where people really believed that the earth was no longer flat and I think a lot of people really did believe the flat earth for much longer than they want you to know and it's really interesting that they even have this online because you know this is just on such a credible website where how can they deny that flat earth should be being talked about in a serious matter when this was a subject that was taught in schools a hundred years ago. Alright, so I really hope you guys check this out for yourselves and just see how many references there are to the flat earth and you know the ways that they use it to try to brainwash the masses they successfully did. They really, really successfully brainwashed, you know, our parents' his parents' his parents, <laughs> you know, great, great, great grandparents. They were really the ones who were possibly could have been flat earthers if it wasn't silenced. Albert Einstein was a genius. On December the 31st, 1999, Time Magazine selected Albert Einstein as the person of the century. Well, that's what they would have you believe, but while I was researching the origin of the theory of relativity, I discovered the unthinkable. Historians are claiming Albert Einstein was a fraud, a plagiarist, and a wife beater among other things. Why they have been praising Einstein. It says here, his actual commitment was Zionism. This is why he gets so much praise. Doesn't matter that he's a plagiarist, a wife beater, a sociopath, a womanizer. Doesn't matter. He is in support of the Zionist agenda, so they have propped him up as the greatest. A genius when he's a friggin' idiot.
So I'm just out in my yard. Uh, a lot of people forget that you can create your own rainbow. If you just turn on a sprinkler, um, and if the sun is angled the right way, only when you're outdoors, you will get a rainbow. So that's the first question. Why can you not simulate a rainbow indoors? Uh, there's a stipulation. You can create a rainbow indoors, but you need a mirror. You need a mirror to, to do a science test and create a, a rainbow inside. So I beg the question, if you need a mirror indoors, what's providing the mirror when you are outdoors? And that mirror is the dome. It's catching sunlight and it's meeting itself to create all the various colors it collides in the water droplet, serves as a lens, and the slight varying, uh, variations of angle creates the colors of the rainbow. A rainbow proves that there's a dome above your head. Questions unanswered. How exactly do sprites form and what accounts for their peculiar shape? This sprite may seem to burst up from the storm clouds towards space. Electrons are colliding with charged particles in the atmosphere, creating a pathway for the electrons to travel. Where they go depends on the concentration of electrons and the composition of the atmosphere. Sprites are beautiful and intriguing. But do they actually have a role to play in Earth's upper atmosphere? Once the electrons cut open a path, the atmosphere around it becomes highly electrified. Driving since 1960, my garden in a bottle, seedling sealed in its own ecosystem and watered just once in 53 years. David Latimer first planted his bottle garden in 1960 and last watered it in 1972 before tightly sealing it shut as an experiment.
the plant inside has grown to fill the 10-gallon container by surviving entirely on recycled air, nutrients and water. Gardeners expert says it is a great example just how pioneering plants can be. All rocket launches do not go straight up, but rather make a parabolic curve which falls back to Earth. And, uh, and then the TV viewers are shown an animation or a cartoon of the rocket entering and traversing space. We never see the shuttle or any rocket actually um, leave the Earth's atmosphere and go into space. And that's because space is fake, and they use many methods to pull off the illusion. Televised rocket launches do not go straight up, but arc, uh, leveling off up at around 75,000 to 100,000 feet. 
and uh, they simply fly too far out of range to be seen by the cameras or any of the people watching. But as long as the public doesn't see it blow up within the first few minutes, then it's deemed a success. Now, either way, they certainly do not go into space. So you spin, you know, when you spin pizza dough, it kind of flattens out. Yeah. It gets wider in the middle. And so Earth, throughout its life, even when it formed, it was spinning. And it got a little wider at the equator than it does at the poles. So it's not actually a sphere. It's, an, it's oblate. And officially, it's an oblate spheroid. That's what we call it. But not only that, it's slightly wider below the equator than above the equator. A little chubbier. A little chubbier. Yeah. Chubby is a good way. It's like pear-shaped. Yeah. So it turns out the pear-shapedness is bigger than the height of Mount Everest above sea level. Om de vier dagen wordt er wel ergens een satelliet gelanceerd. Intussen zwermen er al meer dan 14.000 rond onze aardbol. They want to be slaves. Now I risk sounding like a conspiracy theorist, but it's no longer a theory. What I'm about to say is fact. The secret organizations of the world power elite are no longer secret. They have planned and are now leading us into a one world communist government. of citizens capable of critical thinking.
12, 11, 10, 9. Ignition sequence starts. 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. All engine running. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. 32 minutes past the hour. The exploration of space will go ahead. And it is one of the great adventures of all time. Its conquest deserves the best of all mankind. For we meet in an hour of change, in a decade of hope, in an age of knowledge. And even though I realize that this is, in some measure, an act of faith and vision, for we do not now know what benefits await us. But if I were to say, my fellow citizens, that we shall send to the moon 240,000 miles away a giant rocket carrying all the equipment needed for survival on an untried mission to an unknown celestial body and then return it safely to Earth, re-entering the atmosphere at speeds of over 25,000 miles per hour and do all this and do it right before this dictate is out, then we must be bold. of space will go ahead and it is one of the great adventures of all time that's one small step for man one giant leap for man for the eyes of the world now look into space to the moon and to the planets beyond we set sail on this new sea because there is new knowledge to be gained but why some say the moon why choose this is our goal. And they may well ask, why climb the highest mountain? We choose to go to the moon. We choose to go to the moon. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other thing. Not because they are easy, but because they are hard. of all time. We set sail on this new sea because there is new knowledge to be gained. But why some say the moon? Why choose this is our goal? And they may well ask, why climb the highest mountain? We choose to go to the moon. We choose to go to the moon. We choose to go to the moon this decade and do the other thing, not because they are easy, but because they are hard.
and it is one of the great adventures of all time. It's a process called sonoluminescence. The star in a jar, a tiny spot of bright light contained in a flask of liquid. This star in a jar is made when a sound wave is passed through a small bubble inside a flask of liquid. And this sound wave makes the bubble do something remarkable. First it expands, then it collapses. And this collapse happens so violently that vapor molecules trapped inside the bubble slam together and heat up so much that the bubble gives off an incredible burst of heat and light several thousand times a second, giving the appearance of a star. Pitcher, steroid Santa Claus kicks and deals. It's a long fly ball going back, back. And the ball shatters the sky, bringing the ocean itself down into the stadium. Oh, Simpson just broke this dream's reality wide open.
the ratio that proves the existence of intelligent design. I mean, if you go to the Golden Ratio site for Wikipedia 2 on the same theme, um, <laughs> they don't mention any of this stuff in nature that we're going to talk about. They talk about how it's found in architecture and math and all this kind of stuff. They don't discuss it how it's found in the measurements of the human arm. Why not? That's the point here. I think that just made sense to me. It has to be a conspiracy. How could all of this be overlooked and how could Wikipedia leave it out? It has to be somehow that big money has pushed their influence. They've had a drive to keep this covered up or something. These can't all be coincidences. And junk geometry in high school and they don't teach you about any of this? The golden ratio everywhere in nature? It, and we know who controls the universities, uh, the big money behind it, all the way up to the Illuminati Nephilim. So this is planned, okay? It's got to be a conspiracy. It's covered up completely in, in the best-selling books about the Golden Ratio, which come from uh, wealthy university professors. And the education, government-controlled education system absolutely covers it up. You see how I mean everything's falling in the same direction, you know, that it's covered up. Nu blijkt bijvoorbeeld dat onze aarde niet uniek is, want één op de zes sterren wordt vergezeld 
door een planeet die ongeveer even groot is als de aarde. En die zouden ook bewoonbaar zijn. Nou, tijd om te praten hierover met wetenschapsjournalist Govert Schilling. Welkom Govert. Ja. Eén op de zes sterren wordt vergezeld door ja, een grote is, planeet. Het is onvoorstelbaar om je dat in te denken. Want in ons melkwegstelsel zijn ongeveer zo'n slordige 100 miljard sterren. Dus over hoeveel planeten hebben we het dan? Het zijn dus eigenlijk 100 miljard zonnen zoals de onze. En dan heb je het over ongeveer zo'n 16, 17 miljard planeten zoals de aarde. Dat Well, um, the Bible has a very, very clear view of what this, this, um, this place is. And it matches that place more than it matches this. Okay? And, and what it says is the great deep is under it. Just water. It's, it's just deep water. And above the firmament is water. And, you know, it says in, in Genesis that uh, he separated the water below from the water above and made a space. <laughs> and then made dry land appear out of the water. So, um, what's under, under the, the flat earth? Well, it's water, and it just goes on. Um, again, I don't know for sure, because I've not been under there. And it tells me that that is true, and this isn't. And I'm starting to believe and trust my intuition about this. It's true because uh, this world is very different from what most people think it is. Um, there are very powerful people who essentially rule this world right now um, and the ordinary person is a slave in this world and slaves aren't educated you know they're taught what they need to or you know, they, they only need they need to know that's it they're not, they're not taught truth they're taught what they need to know um, and so you're, you're taught enough so that you can you know, do the paperwork and operate the machinery, um, but you're not meant to know what's really going on because that's what, that's the power they have over us. They know what's going on, what, you know, how, how this world works. We don't, so they can control this. 
in my, in my opinion, the, the Big Bang theory and uh, the theory of evolution and the ball earth theory are all interlinked and they're all there to make us feel as though we're insignificant. Small, tiny, Minion. unimportant uh, pieces of slime crawling around on a, on a speck of dust in an infinite universe. If that's true, and there's no purpose, there's no meaning to anything, then the, our owners can do whatever they want with us. Then, you know, this is all accidental, so food can be genetically modified because it's imperfect. You know, we can be modified because we're imperfect, you know. Um, if we realize that this system is everything, everything that NASA has put, put out is CGI, it's fake, okay? Um, you know, people say, uh, I think you mentioned it, um, you know, if you look out in the, into the universe, you see that uh, the moon is round, you know, spherical, and the planets are spherical, and you know, so why are we flat? Well, um, how do you know that the planets and the and stars are spherical? You know, all you get is, if you look for a telescope, you see a flat disk. If you think you see a, um, a spherical shape there, well, it needs two eyes to, to, to resolve 3D. If you're looking for a telescope, you can't see anything in 3D. It's going to be flat anyway. So all you see is a flat blob of light. It's only NASA that's giving you these beautiful pictures of, uh, of, of so-called planets and stars. Yeah? Um, so so it's, it's, it's a fallacy to say, well, everything else out there is, uh, is spherical, so we must be. You know? This is special. Um, it's, it's, it's a fallacy. So this is this uh, idea of a ball earth, theory of evolution, the Big Bang, is all about making us feel nothing so that we can be used. If everybody realized how special we all are, how unique every single life is, then this whole world would change overnight. We wouldn't allow ourselves to, to be used by this cabal. We wouldn't allow this planet to be destroyed. So if, if we all realize that, then we wouldn't allow all, this thing, all these things that are going on. It's all about um, control. There are a small group of people who want to control the world. And because there's so many of us out there, you know, they can't control us directly. They can't, they must use our own minds, our own hearts and minds against ourselves. And this is what they've done. They've, they've educated us into this world, uh, into this globe spinning, you know, heliocentric Big Bang evolution world, uh, which makes us nothing. This is, this is amazing because um, when I first started looking, it was about a year and a half ago, I looked on YouTube and there were maybe about a hundred videos um, and nobody was talking about it. And then over the last, over 2015, it exploded. There are uh, thousands and thousands and thousands of people looking at, at Flat Earth now. And what happens is, is that you'll watch something or read something and it, something will strike a, a chord in your mind and you'll think, yeah, I, I've always wondered that. And what will happen is, you will start feverishly researching. I mean, I, what happened to me was, as soon as I, I got that, I, I spent every waking hour looking for things and testing things. And um, thousands of people around the world who suddenly come into this, they start you know, researching and, and getting a, a passion for this because this is what I think. It's the truth. And we recognize the truth when we hear it. And we, and, you know, we feel it. And, and this, this I, again, I believe, has come at the exact right time so that we, we awaken to what's going on in the world. Nothing else, you know, 9-11 even, hasn't awoken people, right? Um, I've, I've been an atheist for 40 years. I didn't want anything to, to do with God and Bibles and whatever and religions. Um, and now I know for a fact there is a creator. There are only two possibilities. 
either there is a God or there isn't. And both of them are terrifying. If there isn't a God, then nobody's in control. We're hurtling through space and, and there's no plan and there's no, there's no nothing and, you know, that's terrifying. If there is a God, then we'd better find out who he is and what he wants and do exactly what he says. And it turns out that he gave us very specific instructions on how to live. Um, and they're not, they're not rules as in, you know, laws that you, you know, that um, you must do, follow because, uh, you know, or put you in prison if you don't. No, these are, these are, are rules to live by, to, to make a harmonious world. You know, don't, don't harm anyone, don't kill anybody, don't steal from people, you know. Don't lie. I mean, these, these things are written in our hearts anyway, yeah? But we're in a society that, um, that legalizes all of the Ten Commandments, you know. Uh, policemen and soldiers can kill. They're allowed to kill. Yeah. I've been told that they are allowed to lie to try and get um, to, to catch somebody. Yeah. They're allowed to lie. Um, everything in the Ten Commandments is legalized in this society. Yeah, this, this, is, this is a profound movement. I don't like using the word movement, but it's a profound shift in consciousness for people because um, unlike any other uh, topic that's, that's come out in the last few years, this one has made people realize that they've been lied to. The earth, the earth is flat, definitely flat. Thinks that the earth is pear-shaped. No, the earth is flat.
Earth is not spinning. Earth is flat. Space is fake. With all the empirical evidence and after months of research, I am 125% sure our Earth is flat. There's no curvature. Where's the curvature? Hello, I'm Darren Ryan. I've done the research and I believe that the Earth is flat. The Earth is flat. NASA never went anywhere. That possibly Uranus is the only thing I like to do. Earth is flat. It does not move. My school books say the Earth is round, but I think it's flat. The Earth is flat. It's always been flat and will remain flat. Wake up. Use your own mind. The earth is flat. Look around with your own eyes. The earth appears to be flat. It's all about fake space. No Hubble. Space is fake. The Earth is flat. The Earth is not a spinning ball. The Earth is flat. There's no satellites up there, the stars aren't trillions of miles away that people can't really even comprehend. And the sun is not any three million miles away. From the elites, 500 years to get everybody to believe it's a ball. It's going to take you less than five to get everybody back to the truth. It being flat, 